Continuing on from our previous video where Don discusses the amazing and incredibly intricate artistic wonder that is the Kailash Temple, we felt it a good time to cover another incredible ancient wonder, and indeed set of rock-cut temples known as Madan Saleh. Predictably, a little shared enigmatic site, it is located within modern-day Saudi Arabia. Purportedly dating from the Nabataean Kingdom, 1st century AD, it is the southernmost settlement after the better known, yet no less impressive Petra, made famous by the Indiana Jones epics. In 2008, UNESCO proclaimed Madan Saleh a site of patrimony, becoming Saudi Arabia's first World Heritage Site. 131 rock-cut monumental structures said to have been built as tombs. However, as they were cut with such precision, their existence is clearly a mysterious one. Very little is known regarding the ancient builders of these sites. The little we do know was left on several mysterious and invaluable plaques, which adorn a select few of these rock-cut structures. Although the insides of the tombs appear to have been rather crudely finished, the outer exteriors are clearly phenomenally refined. For a civilization even a mere 2,000 years ago to have managed to create such precise structures remains a tough thing for mainstream archaeology to explain. Just like the many other sites, Puma Punka, Giza, etc., etc., they display a far superior level of ability to that of which we are led to believe. And as always, mystery history presumes it is not the historic record which is incorrect, but rather the antiquity of these structures which is actually being hidden, their true age concealed and attributed to a post-cataclysmic civilization rather than their true creator. The Nabataeans, the academically claimed builders, were quite advanced for their chronological position within history regardless, supposedly having a strongly democratic society, sharing wealth and land equally amongst the tribe. They also displayed an incredibly complex understanding of hydraulic systems. The name Mada and Saleh, or the city of Salih, is also interestingly associated with a very ancient prophet, which is also connected to an ancient tribe known as the tribe of Talmud. Saleh is also the equivalent to a very ancient figure mentioned within the Hebrew Bible. The tribe of Talmud, said to be the descendants of the biblical Noah, However, the Tamid were also said to have become very corrupt, materialistic, and stopped believing in God. According to the accounts, this is when God sent Prophet Salih to warn them that if they would continue in that way, they would be destroyed, a prophecy which eventually came true. To this day, the remains of the ancient sites are considered by some to be cursed. What do you think regarding the rock-cut tombs of Mada and Saleh? Remnants left by a culture some 2,000 years ago with the use of copper and stone tools? Or structures left by a far more advanced, far more capable ancient people, whose entire existence is attributed to others, subsequently concealing it here upon our planet? Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Petra, undoubtedly one of the most impressive stone cut ancient cities on Earth. Carved into the meandering rising rock faces, within a red stone gorge in Jordan, with the mastery of the original stonecutter's abilities on full display, unfinished, possibly perceived as insignificant areas of this site. Invaluable to our investigations into their construction, as these areas still possess the initial stages of the stonecutting procedure, patterning we have used to identify the work of the creators of these sites by means of the tool marks they left behind, now found and identified by us at a number of different ruins all over the world. However, Petra is a place that although used as the backing for many popular titles, the true size of the entire city, and indeed many of the lesser studied rarely mentioned corners of the site and the sculptures found therein, are just as impressive. Some of these areas displaying a tremendously greater age proof of a far earlier group of stone-cut dwellings, created far earlier in history, which are found intermingled with the more recognizable structures. For not only is any logical explanation as to how such structures were originally constructed, absent from the mainstream tale of events, but additionally a near-identical conundrum confronts historians regarding the temples in India, one such being that of Kailash. 
These temples, instead of having been cut into rising rock faces, as found in Jordan's Petra, were instead carved downwards out of the bedrock, which was no less of an incredible feat, if anything, an even more impressive accomplishment. Additionally, why structures on completely different continents, both cut out of solid rocks, would share the same tool markings, which like a fingerprint, are now allowing said sites to finally be linked together, providing compelling evidence to support the posit of a past now lost, once highly advanced global civilization which existed far before academically documented history. Additionally, just like that of Longyu Cave in China, yet another ancient site cut straight out of solid stone, the hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of tons of waste mortar has never been found. To create such an enormous structure is one thing, but to actually successfully transport away all of the quarried stone is a feat we feel would have taken any distant culture permitted to be studied by mainstream archaeology many years to have been accomplished. So long, in fact, that it is implausible to suggest this happened. Evidence of this would litter the sites, and many individuals would have been discovered by now, buried there, each displaying telltale injuries from what would have been an unimaginably difficult task to have accomplished. Bazda Caves in Turkey is yet another ancient site quarried from the bedrocks of Earth, which too shares the same tool marks, left by the same technology that clearly cut all of these sites, thus strongly supporting the premise that all these sites were not only cut by the same civilization, but they utilized lost yet once highly efficient technologies in the original building of these relics. Petra is a site that is thankfully remarkably sheltered and thus remarkably well-preserved, yet due to the areas clearly being of a far greater age, supports the further premise of there having been multiple past civilizations which once dwelled here. Civilization which have been and gone on our planet, which are unfortunately often dismissed or ignored, even hidden with great effort. Yet thankfully, the proof, no matter how some try to keep hidden, remains for all who can recognize them to see, proofs which we find highly compelling. We have in the past covered the remarkable remnants of the amphitheaters of antiquity. Noting the still existing, yet now lost technological accomplishments present at such sites, such as the polygonal flooring still present within Delphi, Greece. Yet most conveniently, now not still in existence at many sites worldwide, as if removed at a later, more modern date, possibly to cover up these truly impressive sites' real age, and indeed the evidence which suggests they were regardless of academic claims, the feats of a now lost, yet once highly capable, and arguably global, super-civilization. One site with a particularly impressive legacy is that of the Petra Theater. Now largely claimed as a 1st century AD Nabataean theater, it is situated some 600 meters from the center of Petra. A substantial part of the theater was somehow, just like that of the rest of Petra itself, once carved straight out of the solid rock. Yet no less impressive are the sections constructed prior to this, such as the Scana and exterior wall, which were constructed not from solid rock, but regardless, clearly by highly capable individuals with the intention of giving the theater a long life, something they succeeded at no end. In addition, the theater's auditorium consisted of three horizontal sections of seats, separated by passageways and seven stairways, all constructed later to ascend. The theater could accommodate a number of approximately 8,500 people, more than the estimated number of Ammon Theater. Although Petra Theater follows similar architectural patterns of Roman theaters, which it must be noted were all somehow constructed to enhance their acoustic resonance, is now attributed to the Nabataean Kingdom due to the floral textures found within, which do indeed match this once great civilization's artistic styles. Its characteristics, however, although claimed as being copied from other sites, now claimed as Roman, was as mentioned, carved from solid stone something amphitheaters of Rome were not. Who built Petra Theater, indeed who built Petra, or the other amphitheaters around the globe, all possessing this advanced acoustic ability? Where did this knowledge come from? 
Where did this knowledge get lost through history? It is a quest which we find highly compelling.